Tom Rain stands out as one of the great characters that I can remember in a class of 24. Tom Rain was a kind and caring man who lived a simple life and enjoyed the simple pleasures of life. He was a very, very nice fellow and uh, very well spoken and he had a good word for everyone to say. Tom was a lovely man, he was a the death of Tom Rain on Friday the 6th of May 2011 robbed the Castle Island of a rare talent and a noted wit. One of the best known faces on the streets of the town for over the past couple of decades, Tom demonstrated his unusual take on the world at an early age. This tribute begins with Paddy Jones who recalls Tom as a lively contributor to school life in their days at St. Patrick's Secondary School for a five-year term between 1960 and 1965. At that time we had a teacher called Mr. Jim Lyons, or James Lyons, he lived above Vincey Cain's supermarket. He was our Latin teacher and of course Tom was a great mathematician into geometry and algebra, but he had much interest in Latin or, or history, which were the subjects Mr. Lyons taught. And uh, part of the program for the, for the Leaving Cert was known as Latin Unseens. Uh, it consisted of getting a paragraph of Latin from some other Latin writer that we hadn't ever come across with a deliberate mistake in grammar. And uh, our job was to see the mistake and uh, write out and write in the proper thing on the, on the piece of paper. But uh, the following day, Mr. Lyons went around to all of us and he looked at four efforts. But when he came to Tom, there was no effort only, just a blank page. And uh, Mr. Lyons said, Well, Ren, he said, where is it? And Tom looks up and he said, I couldn't see it, sir. In spite of his drawbacks as a linguist, Tom's talent as an artist is widely remembered. There are several examples of his work dotted throughout the locality to this day. One of his most famous being the public house seen from Charlie Owen's bar, which he painted in the mid-1960s to mark a change in the Sunday licensing laws of that time. I worked in the butcher shop and Tom was there with us and Con Olin making black puddings. And we had a great, great crack there. He would feed the day going with him. And we'd leave in the evening and we'd go to the pub next door, Conor Woolen, Tom Rain, Charlie Lennon and myself. And we'd have a few drinks that evening after making all the black puddings and stuff like that. And then at one stage, the um, Sunday Time magazines came around and took a lot of photographs of Tom's paintings in the shop. Four, four people took a lot of photographs all day there, taking of Tom's lovely paintings. And we'd go to the pub in the evening. And we had a good few drinks there. The boys from the Sunday Times there stood us drink all day. We went out the door stacked and Tom the whole hours. So Tom Wren was a great painter, a great artist, and uh, he didn't paint the first paintings I ever see of Tom Wren was above in Charlie Lennon's, the butcher shop at that time. And uh, how he came to do the paintings there was he was uh, helping out making the puddings and filling the puddings below it, uh, Charlie Lennon's. Charlie used to make puddings which, and they were very nice puddings too. And uh, he, he took on from there. When he, he did his leave and set, he, um, he wanted to be an artist and he went to Dublin. He spent a week there. Um, um, and, you know, he was trying to get into art college because he loved the art so much. He didn't get in, so he just he came home then, and he decided to go to England. He went um, over to Watford, and he was on the buses for quite a long time. Then he walked on a paper mill, and the paper mill closed down. And uh, he spent a lot of time with us in London, Mary and myself. And uh, as I said, he decided to come home then because he said he didn't want to end up there. Tom was in England for 17 years and when he came home, he came working for me on the buildings. He worked for me for about seven months and I remember one day we were putting in three foot concrete pipes, very heavy pipes into the very warm day and we were putting them into a dike, rolling them in. And at the end of the day when we had the, the pipes in, 
Tom, we were fairly knackered, and, and, and Tom turned to me and he says, I'm enough for this, he says, this is enough for me. On his return to Castle Island in 1983, after spending the best part of 20 years in England, Tom quickly established his territory at the street corners of the town. Molly's Corner and Bob Finn's Corner were his favourite haunts. His demeanour, good humour and general outlook on the world meant that he was never shot of company. And he was brilliant with the phones. Or if I asked him any question about anything, no matter how old it was, he'd always say, where's the book? And uh, we used to meet on a Friday evening and we'd always go to um, some place t different to eat. And if he didn't like a place, he wouldn't go in unless he felt comfortable. And uh, he used to chat to everyone and we'd spend about maybe two hours and then we'd do a little bit of shopping and we'd come back home and we'd have a chat. And he'd be asking about Tony and Elaine and all what's happening and what they were doing. And uh, I stayed with him for about maybe four hours. And then we stopped and meet Tom downtown and the two of us would go for no few points. We went to Miami Captives and across the cabins and everywhere. He was a very interesting man, Tom. An educated man. A brilliant man, painting and everything else. But he was a great character in his own way. I was stopped and meet Tom, he stand up the corner. And we'd have a great old chat and everything. We'd go for a few points. Because both of us were drinking that time. <laughs> And for Mary McCarthy's we'd hit. And we happened did a tour the town in, we'd hit on for candles and and for the snook, the Tom he hit after us and he saw the both of them I didn't know, both our sons. But he was a lovely man and when we used to have a good old crack and we could discuss anything with Tom. Anything in the world. And he'd have a conversation with you. I suppose um, everyone has their own person or character that they would associate with a town. And for me, Tom Rain would be one of those people. My memories of Tom will be from Church Street Corner, I would be on my way uptown maybe every morning of the week and regardless of what mood you might be in yourself, you couldn't but cheer up when you get that happy salute and often very witty as well from Tom. My memories of him were together with Michael Murphy from Market Cross, Ned Flynn from Machine Bar Cross and Dan O'Dinghy when we'd meet every morning, come hail rain or snow. We always through down all Castle Island, where Tom described his days with Charlie Lennon and the stories that were told regards to the great footballers humans and when Daniel arrived Tom always berated him about cock had no chance. Our friend Ned would try into the famous Kelly song What's the Secret of Kelly? And indeed Tom really enjoyed it. But the memory most of all I have of him is the way he clenched his fists and he walked down the town as if he owned it. That together with the unique way that he had of riding a bicycle. He was a great character in that he, he played a lot of pranks that we can remember him for and also that he put teachers to the pin of their collar in, in finding ways to deal with him because at that time the authority of teachers was far more than it was even 10 years or 20 years after. I remember always he was caught up to us, like, you know, and Shell uh, and Emery, he always gave him great time, like, you know, he, he they always played with him, he drew for them, like, you know, he entertained them, he, he kept talking for ages, he could keep him going for the night, and you'd have to say nothing, like, you know, he was, he was great in that way, like, you know, but then every Christmas he was caught up to us, like, and I remember last Christmas he came as well, like, you know, and we had a great day, like, he ate enough, didn't drink, he was after drink for years, but had talking and having the crack and carried on and had a great day.